I wanted to uh, talk about metering devices. Now, how many different types of metering devices have you seen or heard of out there in the field? Now, I have heard of seven of them. Two are not really used. One is the high side float. The other one is the low side float. Those are typically used in chillers. And those are the older chillers and they've kind of gotten away from those. So, but out there in the field, most of the time, what you see is what they call a T x v thermostatic expansion valve like the name implies thermostatic it has to do with temperature we'll talk about that in a second then there's this other one e x v electronic expansion valve electronic because it uses electricity it's all controlled electronically so it's going to do what it needs to do with the use of electricity then there's what they call a X V some people say a E V depends on who you're talking to automatic expansion valve automatic expansion valve then there is your capillary tube and then there is your piston so this these are the five more common metering devices out there we said the thermostatic expansion valve is going to it has to do with temperature but actually what it does is it maintains superheat in the evaporator. It makes sure that the superheat in the evaporator is right where it's supposed to be, and it's going to adjust. It's gonna open and close to maintain that proper superheat. And usually they come preset from the manufacturer, but sometimes we have to adjust them, and we can talk about that another time. Another one, we said it was the electronic expansion valve. Well, guess what? That's going to do basically the same thing. It maintains constant superheat and it's going to open and close and it's going to adjust, but it is going to do it all electronically. It's going to have to have sensors, electrical sensors that are going to send the signals over to a board. The board is going to adjust, it's going to send a signal to the valve and it's going to actually open and close the valve electronically. It's got a little motor in there that opens it. All of that to maintain constant superheat. Now, the other one is the automatic expansion valve. Automatic expansion valve, what that is supposed to do is maintain constant pressure inside the evaporator. Pressure. So, if we think about it, in an air conditioning system, we typically want the evaporator to be right around 40 degrees. That's ideal. That's usually what we're shooting for. But if we're looking at our 22 system, our 22, we're going to need approximately, let's say, our 22, oops, our 22, that's going to be about 68 PSIG. If we were dealing with, let's say, 410A, then we're looking at about 118 PSIG. Okay, somewhere around there, and that's going to give us 40 degrees. So the automatic expansion valve is going to maintain the pressure, this pressure here, so that we can get a 40 degree evaporator. So we can maintain that 40 degree evaporator. It's not going to care about superheat, it's not going to make care about subcooling, it just wants to maintain that pressure. So it's kind of like a pressure regulating valve. Okay. Then we have the cap tube, capillary tube. <clears throat> All this is, is just a long piece of tubing. The longer it is, the more restriction it's gonna have. The smaller the inside diameter is, the greater pressure drop you're gonna have. So now this one here is gonna maintain, what I like to say is constant flow. The flow is gonna be constant going into the evaporator, but it's going to depend on the pressure on the high side and the pressure on the low side. The higher the pressure on the high side, the more pressure you're gonna have or the more flow you're gonna have into the evaporator. But as the pressure in the evaporator increases, it's gonna restrict the flow of it coming in. And it usually works out, but this is you know, a type of metering device that it used to be used. They don't use it that much anymore, but there are some out there. The other one is the piston. The piston, basically, it's gonna be maintaining constant flow, just like the capillary tube. 
and all it is is just a piece of brass that they have machined and it has a little tiny hole in it. Now that hole, some engineer, someone has designed it so that that hole is going to allow that specific flow going into the evaporator. Just like the capillary tube, the higher the pressure on the high side, the more flow you're going to have. The higher the pressure in the evaporator, the, more, the, the less flow you're going to have. So it is the flow that these two are going to be maintaining. Again, they used to use the high side and the low side float, but they've gotten away from those. This electronic expansion valve, that is what they're using in some of the chillers. They're opening and closing it to maintain a level, to maintain the proper amount of refrigerant in there. The electronic expansion valve, I believe eventually we're going to be seeing more of those because they are just that efficient. They're really, really good. They increase the efficiency of a unit so much more. So I would assume that the manufacturers eventually are going to be using more electronic expansion valves, which means that we're going to have to familiarize ourselves with them. But these are the main ones that you will be seeing out there. And uh, as always, I hope that this helped. My name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Uh, take a look at my webpage. Go ahead and like the videos on uh, on Facebook, go to YouTube and follow my page please. And uh, like I said, hope this helped. Thank you.